In my opinion, Jared Cannonier is one of the most overlooked fighters in UFC history, and he is a real BMF. I'm not throwing any shade at Justin or Jorge. I'm just saying I think Jared is a real BMF, and I'm going to tell you why in a second. But guys, before I get into all that Jared Cannonier stuff, I'm super excited to announce that I just started a channel membership for a small monthly cost. You can get some extra perks for the channel. Guys, if you are interested in that, there is a link in the description. And before I get started, please consider liking and subscribing to support the channel. Now, let's go ahead and get into Jared Cannonier. Jared Cannonier has a fight coming up against Roman Delice. And when this was announced, I was really, really surprised. And here's why. Roman Delice's last fight was a good fight with Marvin Vittori where he ended up losing. It was clear one round to two. Marvin won two rounds. He won the fight. Fairly good fight, wasn't really a standout performance from either guy, but decent fight nevertheless. Marvin, off that win, goes on to fight Jared Cannonier a couple months later, and if you saw that fight live, oh my god, this was a beating. This was one of the worst beatings I've ever seen in UFC history, in MMA history, not, not even just UFC. The first round, Vittori won. Jared Cannonier wasn't really clicked in on that first round. He was just kind of feeling feeling out Vittori that first round. I think Marvin won it off activity. And then that second round, man, Cannonier came out like a guy who had a had a fire lit under his ass in the corner between rounds one and two. Like this dude came out, marched Vittori down, landed huge shots, and quite frankly, beat the shit out of him. I like Marvin Vittori. I'm a big Marvin Vittori fan. I'm a big Jared Cannonier fan. I, I really am. But that, like, by the fourth round, man, that fight was getting very, very hard to watch. But it was a great fight. It was a great performance from Jared Cannonier. And off that win, he had another win before that over Sean Strickland. A lot of people say, you know, that was kind of a bad decision. Could have gone either way. Either way, close fight. And he did get the decision win. So... On a two-fight win streak over two top contenders, he fought down the rankings, by the way, in both of those fights. In both of those fights, he fought down. I think Sean Strickland was ranked like seventh, and Cannoneer was like second or third when they fought. And then he goes and fights Vittori, who is right next to him in the rankings. So I can't really say he fought down there, but he fought next, next to the rankings with Vittori. And so now he's fighting down again against a guy who just lost to the guy that Cannoneer just beat the shit out of. And I was thinking about this fight. Not a bad fight, stylistically. You know, it should be competitive. Cannoneer will probably win. But I'm just like, what the hell? And then I thought about it, and I'm like, Cannoneer is a guy who's been very vocal about fighters being more active. You've got to be more active to earn more money. He operates on that mindset. And I'm looking at the rest of the division. you got Strickland as the champion. Who knows who's going to fight Strickland? Israel just lost. He's ranked number one. He's going to be out for a while. He's come out publicly and said that. I just did a video on that. He's going to be out for a long time. He wants to take a break, and he's earned a break. Israel's earned a break. And then we got number two, Drickus Duplessis, who clearly deserves the title shot, right? But, you know, he needed surgery. He got hurt as well, so he's going to be out for a little while. Robert Whitaker, ranked number three. He just got knocked out. Uh, by Drickus, so he's probably going to take some time off as well. And then number four is Cannoneer. So it just simply looks like the four guys above him, you know, the three contenders and the champion, are just going to be busy because it seems like Sean Strickland is going to fight the winner of Paulo Costa and Kamara Usman. So Cannoneer's looking up in the rankings, which he deserves to be looking up in the rankings and fighting up in the rankings. And he's like, well, okay, none of these guys are ready to fight or, you know, don't want to fight. Cool. Give me number seven, Roman Delice, who's coming off a loss. And to me, and I'm not shitting on Roman Delice, I'm not. To me, that is the char characteristic, if I could talk, of a true BMF. I love that shit. I do. I love that shit. Cannoneer absolutely deserves to fight like Whitaker or Duplessis or someone like that up above him. But I love a guy that's just like, okay, no one above me wants to fight. All right, cool. Number 10. Let's go. You know, he doesn't really stand to gain anything from this fight. Roman Delice is not a big name. He's not ranked above him, so he doesn't have number or name. He doesn't have that value. Cannoneer's just like, screw it. Let's go. Let's go, man. I'm just going to fight everyone. Whatever. 
I love that. I love that. Cannoneer has always been that kind of guy. When you go back and look through his record, he's done this quite a bit. You know, he he came down to the middleweight division, beat up David Branch, beat up an older Anderson Silva, and then TKO Jack Hermanson, who was ranked very highly at the time. He then fights Whitaker. He loses to Whitaker, and he's like, all right, Kelvin Gastelum, let's go. You know, he fights Kelvin and then fights Derek Brunson. Not a lot of people want to fight Derek Brunson. He's a hard matchup. He's not really a huge name, pretty good sized name, but not a huge name. He's like, all right, let me fight Brunson. Like, I just, I like Jared Cannonier. I like his attitude. I like fighters that want to fight often and aren't super picky, you know, aren't super picky about name value. He's not cherry picking matchups here. He's like, all right, let's go. You know, let's go number seven, Roman Delite. Like, I love that shit, man. I love that shit. And Cannonier is a guy that just fights anyone. And not to mention, not to mention, I'm putting a Jason mask on him on the thumbnail of this video. And I think he's earned that. And here's why. You go back and watch that Vittori fight. After the first round, so second through f fifth round, last 20 minutes of the fight, that dude was stalking Vittori down, walking towards him, and just looked like a badass. He's a, a shorter guy for the division Cannoneer is. I think he's 5'11", is what he's listed down online. He's shorter than most of these guys. It's just crazy to think he was a heavyweight and a light heavyweight and now a middleweight. The dude hits hard, and I just swear, he kind of reminds me of Mike Tyson, like how he just kind of walks forward. He's not intimidated by any of these guys. He's going to throw power shots, and he's just always coming for you. Even if he's losing the fight, he's still coming forward. So I know that's a bit of hyperbole comparing him to Mike Tyson, um, but that's just what he reminds me of. It's just how he, he carries himself. He seems to be a guy who's never going to be scared of anyone, never going to be intimidated. And I like Jared Cannonier. I think he's a real BMF. I like the guy a lot. And I, I think he's going to beat Roman Delize, and then he is like right back up there in the title, title picture again. So guys, leave me a comment. Let me know what you think of this situation. Do you think it's a little weird? that Cannoneer has taken this fight. I think it's a little odd rankings and merit wise, but from a BMF perspective, man, this makes all the sense in the world. So guys, like and comment, like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video and I will see you in the next one. Take it easy.